पहला हिस्सा कश्मीरी वॉइस का था और दूसरा हिस्सा हमारा एक कल्चरल इवेंट है जो हमारा पहाड़ी कश्मीर का जो पहाड़ी कल्चर है पहाड़ी म्यूजिक है हम उस पर प्रोग्राम करना चाह रहे थे काफ़ी अच्छे से आज हमें मौका मिला है कि हम इसकी बदौलत हमने वो प्रोग्राम कर रहे हैं कश्मीर में जो बोली जाने वाली जुबानें हैं पहाड़ी जुबान जो आज़ाद कश्मीर में मुजफ्फराबाद में बोली जाती है और डोगरी जो जम्मू में ज़्यादातर बोली जाती है और गोजी जुबान जो बोली जाती है उसके भी गीत हम पेश करेंगे और कश्मीरी जुबान में भी हमारे जो फनकार हैं लोकल फनकार जाहिर साहब जाहिर लोन साहब को पेश करेंगे तो हमारे यहाँ ये कुछ हमारे पहाड़ी जुबान पर जो काम हुआ है जो पहाड़ी जुबान पर जो हमारे जो लोगों ने ख़ासकर रश्ट साइड से नॉर्थ वाली साइड पर जो काम हुआ है जुबान पर और उसकी तरवीज में और उसकी जो इसको रिकगनाइजेशन रिकगनाइज करने में इस मुल्क में वो बहुत बड़ा काम है और इस सिलसिले में हमारे पास शाम साहब भी तशरीफ़ फरमा हैं जो रश्ट से आए हैं आबद साहब आबद साहब आशमी साहब भी यहाँ पर तशरीफ़ फरमा है और अली दादा साहब भी हैं हम कल्चरल प्रोग्राम को शुरू करते हुए सबसे पहले मैं दावतों का शमस रहमान साहब को वो रिसर्चर हैं वो टी वी एंकर हैं वेरी वेल नाउन इज बी एनर्स एम ए सोशियोलॉजी एम ए इकनॉमिक डिवेलपमेंट डिवेलपमेंट स्टडीज एंड एम एस सी सोशियोलॉजी रिसर्चर एंड टॉपिक ऑफ टॉपिक ऑफ टॉक है उनका डिवेलपमेंट ऑफ पहाड़ी लैंग्वेज इन ब्रिटेन तो प्लीज वेलकम कीजिए Thank you very much, Tohir, and uh, thank you very much, uh, Kashmir Bhavan Center, uh, and uh, all other uh, people who were involved uh, in uh, uh, the initiation and development of this project and organizing of uh, this function today. Um, my uh, presentation basically um, is on the development of Pari language in Britain, and I will be very brief, and I'm aware of. Uh, the time constraints uh, so i will focus uh, briefly on why uh, we started writing this language in britain and how it all was started so uh, and and i will briefly touch upon uh, the development of alphabet which we needed to uh, accommodate some of the sounds of our language i mean i came to britain in uh, 89 um, 88 actually and uh, in 89 there was a murder in uh, oldham of a young teenager the stored men mentally retarded boy as a mistaken identity by some drug related issues and uh, because the uh, guy who shot him was white and this boy was uh, kashmiri from uh, pakistani occupied side so it was also also kind of seen as uh, you know racist uh, a connotation to it so there were some activities going on there and there i met two people when everybody was speaking in english or urdu mainly urdu uh, but these two boys who were uh, uh, dressed in very english uh, street wise uh, uh, clothes for when they spoke they spoke in kotwari uh, language and as you know kotwari and pari are very close uh, to each other and one of those guy uh, whose name was tarik and i i met them afterwards and uh, it was a, a kind of a, a turning point for for me in terms of understanding what language is and why our language is not written and uh, how it is possible now that we can write uh, our language and it was with introduction through interaction and discussion with dar uh, that uh, um and after my own observations in in the coming weeks and months in the local community that uh, although our language is spoken by people in the in their households uh, but when our there is a, a somebody who is not of pari background when somebody a, a enters into the say the situation our people try to avoid speaking their own language and uh, um and and they feel in, inferior uh, about our own language and they don't acknowledge that this has a name and it 
it is a, a distinct language. So people call it Punjabi or Urdu or you know, Wab. And we thought that the one reason is that because it's not written. We uh, spoken to we spoke to some young people and they were very keen that it should be uh, recognized uh, and acknowledged. But they said because it's not written, so it is not a language because languages are written. And then Tarek when he suggested that we should write it, and I was, I mean, I, I came from uh, 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 Azad Shri at that time, and I had uh, done my MA Sociology from Karachi University, and I was very much into Urdu literature and Urdu writing and Urdu everything, and I never thought about what is language, and how languages were started, and how they are written. And when he suggested that we should write uh, our language, I said it's not possible because this is only a spoken language. And then he explained that every language was once a spoken language. At one point in history, different languages were started, uh, you know, to be um, written, bring in, in the writing form. And I'm taking too long. No. <laughs> ये गाड़ी है किसी की DS03KPU इसने रास्ता प्लान किया है किसी और का तो अगर यहाँ किसी की है ये गाड़ी तो प्लीज इसको मूव कर दें एंड वो वेन वेन अब इसी इट वाज लर्निंग प्रोसेस फॉर मी अबाउट लैंग्वेजेस एंड देन वी थॉट यस वी कैन राइट एन आउट बिकॉज at that time, the new Urdu word processors were just uh, uh, came to the, uh, in the market, Sadaf and Surkhab. And I was uh, coincidentally working in an organization at that time where these uh, software were used. So uh, we started writing. And our mind was so much kind of programmed in uh, reading and writing Urdu that for the first about week or so, Soon we started writing, and I, I was kind of given uh, responsibility to write down. And soon I started writing, I switched to Urdu. And it took a couple of weeks before uh, I managed to produce a couple of pages in Bahari. And uh, at that time, uh, Ali Adalat, uh, our friend, we all were involved in the uh, Kashmir movement as well. And uh, he was of the view that we we are distracting uh, uh, from the Kashmiri uh, struggle by introducing this language dimension. And we were of the view that in any struggle we cannot incorporate uh, all the linguistic diversity of the people cannot be uh, you know, struggle for freedom because we, every language of Kashmir should be uh, given recognition. So writing Bari language should not be in in conflict with the with the Kashmiri struggle, what our views people have. So we had these kind of discussions as well, and then also there were also dangers that uh, uh, if we focus too much on language, we are living in Britain, and you know we are kind kind of are we not helping people to kind of uh, isolate? Uh, we should be encouraging people to integrate and and participate in their society. So all these uh, obviously issues came up when we started this process. Uh, but my main challenge was uh, that uh, uh, people were saying, well, we can't read it. And it was kind of blockage, mental blockage that this language cannot be read. Uh, however, gradually, with uh, time, when we started when we produced a magazine, it's called Chichka. Um, and Chichka means, you know, the, um, um, uh, winter's morning sun, and uh, it, it was uh, in English and Bahari, and we obviously had issues with whether it's Bahari or Potwari, or, and we thought, okay, we leave it to people, whatever, whoever, whatever name people give it to it, that's fine. And uh, we, uh, our target was that we would produce about five magazines, and if it, it take, takes off, and if more people start writing, fine, and if not, then obviously we had other things to do, so we perhaps won't be able to get it, and we were not perhaps the best people to produce it uh, every month, so we produce maybe after two months, three months, 
and it, it was received well by a lot of people here and uh, a lot of people uh, started writing in the language uh, you know back home and uh, um, now there are a lot of people in Portli and Punch uh, and Ravaport and Meepur who are writing in this language. But back to Britain, uh, we in, in this language we have particular sounds which were uh, for which there were no words available, uh, letters available in uh, uh, Urdu alphabet which we used, which originally of course from Arabic and through Persian and then uh, Urdu is, uh, is also used for Urdu language and most of other languages uh, written in Pakistan. And we, after several debates and some help from linguists from Pakistan and one from Amir Pur, the Koji writer of Baba Fadr Hussain and after even Rizvi, they came over and uh, we developed two new letters for our, our language. Uh, and, and then we, you know, sort of started writing. And then we have uh, Ali Adalat who uh, initially was reluctant, but then he became the first actually published writer in our language when he produced his uh, Purchka Sarmad, uh, Purchna Sarmad, uh, his uh, short stories collection, and then uh, two, three other books uh, also came out, including uh, Malas Man, the first novel. So he, obviously, he will, he will talk about it. And uh, then we have uh, Abad Saber, who was also part of this uh, language development movement. And he will talk about uh, the language and provision of language services in, in, in Britain. Abad Abad Sarko, Abad Hussain Ashmi Sarko Tawadayate, he is a manager of community language services, MA management studies. Um, Postgraduate diploma in management studies. Topic of course is community language services and Bahari language. Abbas. Thank you very much. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I've been requested to talk on the uh, language from the uh, perspective of service delivery, particularly the local authorities and NHS trusts and so forth. Can I first of all uh, congratulate the team, the Shemibosi's team and Tokisa particularly, who have arranged for this function and also have worked hard in putting together this project. And I hope that you know this project is taken forward and not put into the back burner or anything like that. Because we do start a lot of projects and then they don't seem to uh, continue as they should do. So I hope that uh, people here will uh, continue to uh, take this forward. Um, in relation to the local authorities and, and particularly interpreting and translating and all that kind of area, this particular talk that I'm going to do is usually about 30 to 45 minutes talk, but I'll try and be as brief as possible so we won't bore you too much. Um, you know that uh, our community, particularly community that came from Mazar Kashmir and the Tuar region uh, back in the 60s and the 70s, they came here to uh, make a good life earn some money, send it back home, and then go back home very quickly. That didn't actually happen. But what uh, sort of a things that uh, merged was that the, the authorities, the institutions, um, they provided services uh, to people, and uh, other people at that time didn't know much about the, the institutions who provide services. So nobody really, up to about 70s, um, got in touch uh, with any of the institutions and said these are, these are our requirements, or these are our services that we need. So, because they weren't communicating directly to the institution, they, they were usually communicating to a third person, which usually was a person from uh, middle class, from Pakistan, or maybe from Azad Kishmir, who only sort of uh, uh, recognize the language as Urdu and Punjabi. There are no other languages, 
is it? So basically, if you are if you are from Pakistan, if you're from Azad Kashmir, the only language that you spoke or the only language that you know is Urdu or Punjabi. So if, say, for example, a policeman or maybe a, a social worker or a health worker or a housing officer asks, can you tell me what your language is, please, uh, so I can get you an interpreter. And they would basically say, I speak Urdu. And we know for a fact that the community, particularly in those in the post time, didn't actually speak any Urdu. They couldn't speak Urdu because they hadn't been to school. They hadn't been educated. So, they, as soon as they passed that message on, or this um, official would go and get an interpreter. Maybe that interpreter's from Karachi, from Bombay, from wherever, because it's Urdu language they're talking about. And when you, once you get to that nitty gritty of the language, you know, the structure of the language is in all South Asian languages, particularly in the Urdu. Uh, Punjabi and these languages, the structure of the language and the sort of uh, is the same. There's no, not much difference. But when you get into doing and the vocabulary of, of, of the actual language, that's when you know you find out that some of the words don't actually exist in Google, they can't translate it. So that, that's the difficulty that, that initially that happened. So the local authorities, even though in the beginning of the 80s, they started to uh, have special services, special interpretation translation services within local authorities. And sort of uh, um, came out, particularly politicians, the local politicians, the councillors, the MPs, that this is what we're doing for the ethnic minority, this is what's happening. Um, we are providing them a translation and interpretation service. And that then went well and they received votes and stuff from the communities. But getting to the actual problems uh, of uh, the, the distinction of the languages was uh, becoming a problem. And there had been some cases where people from Azad Kashmir or from the Twa region spoke specific, specific dialect or specific words and they were wrongly interpreted in the courts, wrongly interpreted uh, in the housing offices in places like that. But it, it didn't sort of uh, uh, acknowledge or didn't get into people's mind that we need to make the distinction between languages. It was only when we got involved into this language development, particularly the Pahari Kutwari language development, we started. We realized that this is what is needed. So when uh, I come from Huddersfield, and Huddersfield is run by a local authority called Kirklees Council. Kirklees Council actually has Huddersfield and Dewsbury, one of two of the main towns uh, under its wings. And uh, in, in 2003, uh, when we did this campaign and we got the Kashmiri people and the Pahari language recognized as a separate um, entity from Urdu and Punjabi. We then made the distinction uh, of the languages. So we categorized the Urdu, Punjabi, Pahari, Patwari, and Goji. So these languages were separately categorized and separately then put together. Um, so things kind of ran for, for years, and only recently, I mean, this is one of the things, I think the point about my small talk, the point about it is that this hasn't worked, and it still doesn't work. The reason for that is that still uh, people, when they're asked what language you speak, a social worker putting the case together, and they're putting the initial information, now this family comes from this region of Pakistan, this family comes from Mazad Kashmir, this family, uh, their language is spoken language, Punjabi, spoken language, Urdu. The Patwari and Pahari words are still missing. One of the reasons for that is that there is no recognition. There is no recognition of the people that actually, uh, and therefore our own people not realizing that they may have problem at the end if they not, if they don't actually uh, sort of say what language they speak. Uh, I'll give you a very simple example. 
and this is a, a, a actually booking an appointment on the telephone uh, between an interpreter, a social worker, and a client. And I want you to listen to this properly and, and realize that this is very basic. What you're doing is you're actually booking an appointment and I come and see you. But when it, when it comes to a sensitive area, you know, when you're talking about a very sensitive subject, uh, about a particular health maybe, or maybe uh, some other issues related, then you, know, you get it wrong. And this, uh, one of our officers actually uh, uh, receives a call from a social worker, can I book an appointment with Mrs. Khan? Uh, and uh, I've, I've got two days, it could be either Monday or Tuesday, but you please let her know that. What, which day is suitable to her. So we, we asked what language it is, and the language we were told was Urdu. So our uh, administration officer gets the interpreter on the telephone on a TV call, gets the social worker there and the client on the phone, so all three people on the phone talking to each other. And uh, the, interpreter, the, the, the interpreter asks the client, um, ये आपसे पूछ रहे हैं कि आपको पीर के दिन आपके लिए बेहतर रहेगा या मंगल का दिन बेहतर रहेगा? This is how she spoke अब वो कुछ जवाब दे रहे थी मिसल को नहीं आए तो क्या करें? तो जो she tried again the attempt to try to get to explain कि वो कह रहे हैं कि आप पीर के दिन आपके लिए बेहतर रहेगा या मंगल का दिन बेहतर रहेगा? Now it is very simple but somehow the woman on the other side who was a Patwari speaker, couldn't understand okay, what she was saying. So the administration officer, who also, also was a Patwari speaker, she said, leave this for time, ring, I'll, I'll sort it out, out myself. And then she called her back directly and said to her, Ona very quickly she said, Oh, Mughalai, I'm not sure if I'm going to get a good job. I'm going to get a good job. The point I'm trying to make here is that all it is is very simple, a straightforward booking and appointment. People can get it wrong. And you can imagine that if a sensitive uh, issue is taken, what would happen then? And this is happening in day, this day and age. So please, if you know people when you need an interpreter, tell your parents, tell your friends, actually categorize the language that you're speaking, not generalize it. Um, so basically, I think my sort of a, a conclusion on this is that I think there is a lack of recognition. If that recognition is there, people would know that we come from this particular area, this is the language we speak, and this is how we can move forward. I thank you very much for your time. Thank you. A counselor writer, of, author of Pahari short stories and novels, and my ethnicity, ethnicity and racism, postgraduate diploma in management studies, Patrick Thorpe is writing in Pahari language. Please um, welcome Mr. Kassala. <laughs> Thank you, I'll try to be short. I can't, I can't stand between you and the uh, president. Um, when I was invited, I didn't know uh, what was on the, on the agenda I played. You know, I'll just uh, play some notes. Um, everyone has a story. And this is an absolutely wonderful, wonderful, wonderful work that I am witnessing. Now, like they say, every rock has a baby or a Buddha in it. It needs an artist to discover it. Yeah. Every person has a story. When I'm looking at that list, it really, really uh, pleased me and heartened me to see not only stories, but it's achievable stories. I would have liked some ordinary stories as well. Ordinary textile workers, people who worked in wet sound, people who wiped the clothes, and those stories are missing. I think those stories are important. Now, this comes to um, what Shemasov said earlier on. Uh, yes, they used to try and write in Pahari, and we were not aware of cultural academy or anything else going on in the world due to lack of communication. 
uh, death or they were the groundbreaker, which they were in Britain. Well, I should say we were in Britain. I only go, used to go there because they, they were only my friends. And when they got together, I felt very lonely. So I, I used to go for social reasons. And most of them are either born here or uh, urban middle class, studied in Karachi or Meepur or something. They knew nothing about grass blades, they knew nothing about village life or the radio life. So when they were writing, I said, no, no, this is not right. This is how you do it. This is how you milk a cow. They were like, this is how you call a goat. So they said, well, why don't you write? And I, and I thought, I can't write. And I tried before, Urdu, I didn't go to school. And I don't know how old I am. People still don't, you know, like, Around the party area, if he was a boy, the drums were beating and the time were given. And if he was a girl, they, they, they prayed over oh, that. I said, Kiss for the chicken. And that was my I don't know how I could be able to buy Anyway, when I started thinking and writing, when I wrote something in Urdu, I found, I found it difficult. And I, I, I always consulted somebody. When I wrote in English, I could write, but I always translated. Then it, it took me back to my memory land. I thought, well, we used to live in a village. We had no electricity. Days were very short in winter. Nights were very long. You could sleep for 16 hours. And anyway, they did a lot of work at night. You like make yarn, chetha, and all this stuff. And during that, when I was a child, by the fire, my grandmother, my mother, my granddad used to tell stories. We had a very old tradition of storytelling. I said, well, there were stories, and I liked those stories. They were not in English. They were not in any other language. So, I, when, I, when I wrote in Pahani, I didn't have to translate. It came from here. Then I understood the meaning and I wrote. And I must admit that I am the only, and somebody spoke about ceasefire line and this and that. I think I am the only writer from this side, so called. Adat Kishmi, Pakistani administered Kashmir, that has the privilege of having my works published. In 2013, you know, there was an Ali Adalat Astadam number from uh, Sirinagar Cultural Academy. So for me, that was a massive achievement. One more point, I won't, I won't keep you long. Somebody told, you know, talked about identity. Uh, and we have got identity crisis. There's no two ways about it. We ask, at uh, one level, we are Fadiya, we are Kashiri, we are Dukiti, we are Balti. But the common denominator is 1927 state subject. We are state people, like Islamic Republic of Pakistan. People call it Pakistan or India is a big name. Every country has a big name. But we have Jammu Kashmir, Lukit Bhutta, Bhavar, Aiba, it's Kashmiri. Kashmiri, we are, we are all Kashmiri by identity. And because I write, they were doing a, they call CBM, Confidence Building Measures. And all the writers were invited from both sides. And I was, con you know, I was contacted by Srinagar, by Jammu, by Delhi, to, uh, to, to, to um, tell them who writes, who are the writers. So I gave them a big list. Every writer got invited. My visa got rejected. I'm facilitated. My visa got rejected. You know why? They say there are no Kashmiris living abroad. This is only for Kashmir. We are a good writer, but we can't give you a visa because this is for Kashmir. And this is what's happened to us. We came here as Kashmiris and we have become Muslims, Asians, black, 
Pakistanis, Indians, Arabs, even God knows what, but we're not Kashmiris. And now this brings us back, and we should all get together. I went to Lundi University and Uppsala University in Sweden. I met some Uyghur friends. What I was trying to do was, I was trying to register Kashmiri pen in the hand international. And then I went to um, have discussion with Uyghur pen. They're very dominant in the writing pen in the world. And there I found very, very old books. Very old books published in Sri Lanka. I said to them, Uyghurs, I said, how come you publish them in Sri Lanka? They said, in all of Central Asia, in our region, Sri Lanka was cultural hub. And Sri Lanka had publishing facilities that we didn't. Even, you know, like South of China and all this stuff. Then once I went to Tajikistan, and I went to the Shambhai University and I saw a book, book, very old book there, books there. And they were published in Sri Lanka. And look what Sri Lanka is reduced to now. Now, what I'm saying is, culturally and linguistically and in the whole region, geographically and demographically, valley is the heart of the state. But what good is the heart without the body? Now, because Gojri, Pahari, uh, Dogri, Prashishki, Sina, Badrwai, all of them are under attack. All of them are phasing out. And once they phase out, do you think Kashiri will survive? It will not. Therefore, the mind, the heart, the body has to work together. And we, as a unit, have to fight for our survival. That's my message.